Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Tim Hart, branch manager of Van Dyke Mortgage here in Fort Myers. Welcome to another episode of the Heartbeat Show podcast. Got a uh, very uh, interesting guest. Found out he's a local boy, too, here in Southwest Florida. Um, David Wolf from Ocean Habitats, Inc. David, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you today? I'm doing good, buddy. Doing good. Uh, Mariner High School here, class of 94. North Fort Myers High yep. School, class of 94, right? Go, go Red Knights. <laughs> go Red Knights. Oh, boy. All right. Um, so, yeah, you guys know Fort Myers High School right here in, uh, you know, in North Fort Myers High, went to Mariner right across the street or down the road, I should say. So, we got David on today. Um, we got a mutual friend, uh, Captain Planet Garrett Stewart, and kind of pointed me in your direction, started following you on Facebook, and love what you're doing, man. I think these products that you're putting out are so cool, and I want to dive into them, and I want everyone to know more about them. Um, so first off, good job on what you're doing, man. It's really cool stuff. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. And so um, before we get into that, the product you're putting out with these, um, and what do you call them? The artificial reef? How do you how do you call them? I, it's called the mini reef. The mini uh, reef. Because it's small and it, it's an underwater structure. So it's a reef. So the mini reef. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. And so... Um, Let's go ahead and before we get into that and what all it does, if you real quick don't mind, um, how did you, because you were briefly telling me a little bit about your story, go from where you're at now, like where you were before and the inspiration to start up this type of product and business? Well, I actually worked on this when I was in college. Uh, the development of the mini reef started in Sanibel Island with the Marine Habitat Foundation on Tarpon Bay. So... It was kind of a, it started as a as a college job, which which was way better than Home Depot or, or Office Max or something. Right. Um, I was a marine, you know, marine science major, so it was fun to be out, you know, in the water and actually getting experience. Um, I also got to learn a little bit about uh, you know the realities of of like running a nonprofit and doing marine research and having trouble getting funding for everything that you're doing. So, you know, my life kind of left that world, you know, went into real estate uh, for almost 15 years um, before I, before I came back to, you know, kind of what my passion was. So it's kind of a long twisting, you know, journey, but, but I wound back up here and, you know, working in Southwest Florida, you know, uh, quite a bit, uh, you know, doing something I love, which is, which is a lot of fun for me. Yeah. So um, let's get into what these mini reefs are because of, um, I, I think they're awesome. I think they're very cool for these docs, but why don't you start by explaining, um, you know, what, what they are to people that maybe don't know. And by the way, I'll throw a few pictures in here when the finished product comes out. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, what they are is an artificial reef and they replicate what would be found underneath uh, mangrove trees and the crop roots in the water, uh, or if you're further north than like in, in uh, saltwater marsh uh, plants. So they give a place for filter feeding animals to live. Uh, things like oysters and mussels that people are, are familiar with. There's about 150 different types to be found around Florida that'll live on the mini reef. And what they do is eat basically 24 hours a day. And they, they eat out a lot of the, you know, the overabundance of plankton, dinoflagellates that cause things like red tide and brown tide. Um, some like sponges will even eat um, viruses, uh, bacteria, things like that. Uh, they're able to filter out things that small. Um, that's their food. And then like everything, you know, they go to the bathroom and, and that's basically the food supply for uh, the base of the food chain. Uh, little tiny animals that look kind of like shrimp. They're not. They're called amphipods uh, and different worms. And those in turn are food for baby fish and shrimp and crabs and um, lobsters, depending on where we are. Um, so each unit becomes kind of a, a, a house, a, a protection a place for baby fish and, and crustaceans to grow up, and it also has food there for them. So they get a, a much higher survival rate, you know, sometimes between like four and 800 percent more of them will get to a larger called post-juvenile stage than if they were just in the wild in a canal system, for instance, where there's not a lot of um, natural habitat for them to live on since mangroves are, are long gone there. Yeah, I got you. So like these, um, you know, canal, like Cape Coral, right? The canal is just all seawalls, right? So yeah, these which, replace them. Which doesn't give them a great 
place to, you know, not a lot of safety, not a lot of food. So yeah, very little production uh, comes from that for, for nature. Gotcha. And so you have this figured out to where um, you're able to tell. So people in Southwest Florida, right, water quality, and actually all around the, the country, uh, you know, you see water quality issues, uh, the concerns growing, especially last year in Southwest Florida. Um, that opened a lot of eyes to people. And so how does something like this reef that you can put under your dock, how does it help with that water quality? Well, when, when you put a unit in, um, it does take a little while for it to develop because obviously life has to get on it and have a chance to grow. Um, but as the animals living on it filter out, you know, the overabundance of, of microorganisms in the water passing through, you know, they're helping you know, clean things up some way, somewhat that way. And then you have um, stuff like uh, macroalgae that will get on it. And they, just like a plant on land, they put oxygen out into the water and they absorb a lot of the food source that, that would go towards things like um, you know, the green plankton that everyone calls algae in the water um, the growing in abundance. So when, when we take measurements around the mini reefs, we find that, you know, you get, you get, uh, the distance you can see in the water, the turbidity, um, is usually three to four times greater uh, within about a 15 foot area um, around the units compared to canal water just outside of that. Um, you get oxygen levels that can be as much as 40% higher because of the activity going on in the unit. And um, you, know, you also have a lot less nitrogen, uh, phosphates, nitrites um, in the water because it's, been, it's being consumed by uh, macroalgaes um, that, you know, that are beneficial that are living on the units. So the water around the units is actually filtered and, and uh, cleaned quite a bit um, and, and it has a much better water quality um, measurements to it than surrounding canal water. So, you know, the, what we're working towards is having enough of them in a canal system where enough of the water, you know, passes through these units and the entire canal can then, you know, be considered a, a um, you know, more more healthy than than it has been for for decades. That so what an awesome point. As I was wondering that, it's like where I live, it's it's on the water, and it's very uh, the visibility is not good. Um, you know, in Norfolk Myers, right, like uh, over there in right. the river, and um, it's not not clear. So I was wondering, you know, if putting that under your dock. So literally, like you could put it under your dock you will notice in your little area, whatever the, the, the distance may be, that you'll see a difference in the water under that dock around that unit than you would outside of it? Yeah, yeah you do. Um, you know, once they develop, uh, but, you know, those, those animals on there are going to filter. You know, the average is 30,000 gallons. Um, a day? Uh, the, the range, yeah, every single day. It's about the size of an average swimming pool in someone's backyard. They, they, they eat everything out of that much water. So, um, yeah, obviously it's beneficial. And when you get to a, a situation where it's like a slack tide where the water isn't really moving anymore, that's where it, oftentimes, especially if you have multiple units, you know, you can start to see actually a, a clarity difference um, because there's just nothing in the water around the units anymore. You can see the bottom instead of where you can't over like maybe on your property line. Um, once the water gets moving, usually it's it's a little too fast for the for the full removal of everything. So you, you don't quite see um, the same uh, you know, visual aspect to it. But um, it, it helps quite a bit. Uh, Mother, Mother Nature is awesome at what she does. You know, if, if we could give her a chance to you know be around and, and help us out a little bit. That's cool, man. So how did you come up with the idea? Well, th this is an idea that people have been working on and in universities in Florida, that type of thing since probably like the 1960s. Um, Michael Klinsky was actually running the uh, Marine Habitat Foundation that I went to work for out in Sanibel Island. And uh, at the time we were trying to figure out a way to kind of mass produce stone crab or spiny lobster, you know, kind of commercially expensive uh, seafood. And uh, that, that research work wasn't really going well, but you know, we kind of figured out miniaturizing the units um, got rid of the problems we were having and actually the, those problems were turning into a, a, a benefit in the canal system. So that, that's work that we were performing there in like the mid 90s, uh, mid to late 90s. Um, that foundation, you know, 
moved down to Naples and we, we were trying to kind of expand things, but the money dried up basically. And so the research stopped. Um, we probably had the mini reef about 80%, 85% ready at the time. Um, then I went and did my, my real estate world for a while. And then when I came back, uh, starting out of Marco Island, uh, where we had some people who were interested in, in, in helping with this, we, we got units in that actually literally were from Sanibel that we built in high, I built in college um, and brought down there and uh, kind of figured out the rest of the puzzle of, of to make sure they could have a, a long lifespan um, you know, that, that they didn't perform, that their performance didn't decrease with time, you know, kind of, kind of got those bugs worked out. And then, uh, you know, our, our, really our last hurdle was, was, you know, if a major hurricane came through, what would happen? Well, then Irma came through and, uh, you know, we lost one unit, Marco, uh, in Hurricane Irma, even though all the water pulled out of the canals and rushed back in. And uh, we had units that were hanging in 150 mile an hour winds um, that are still there to this day. Oh, wow. Um, kind of answered our question. The, the design works. Uh, it doesn't get destroyed um, in, in that kind of, you know, once every 50 years uh, occurrence in the area. So it can handle that. Then it can handle, you know, your normal afternoon thunderstorms and, and uh, you know, whatever nature throws at it. As long as, your dock is, as long as your dock is there, the unit will be there. I got you. So you put, um, you put one under a dock, if someone out there does. How long before they start seeing life on there well fish will start using it immediately if they're in the area because it gives them shelter uh, it's, it's it's a place to hide from larger predators um depending on how salty it is where you live uh kind of the, kind of the fresher you get the longer it takes for filter feeding animals to get on it to grow up because they usually have shells it's like an oyster so you know, it's anywhere from about a hundred days up to a year you know, depending on how far inland you go. If you're on the Barrier Islands, you've got, you know, 90, 120 days, you've got growth all over the place and it's, it's filtering at full capacity. It'll continue to develop more after that, but it's like going gangbusters. Um, if you're up by the 75 bridge, for instance, um, with, uh, you know, having mussels and that type of thing grow on there, it's probably going to take a full year before you know, the unit gets completely covered. You might take a, a couple of spawning seasons for, for them to get everywhere and have, a, have the amount of time they need to grow up to full size. Gotcha. Um, and so when, um, for the cost, so how much are these? Uh, currently, they're, it's a donation to us. Uh, Ocean Habitats, Inc. is a, is a nonprofit. Uh, it's $250, and we actually deliver and install the units to make sure their the installation is good for, for uh, the life of the unit, uh, or really the life of the dock that it's under. Um, and if someone does order multiple units, there does come a point, since we have cost savings of going to, like, one house, uh, that we, we do discount um, the price once you get to, like, kind of 10-plus units. Um, you know, a, a marina who's putting in 50 units, you know, that kind of thing. We will... Uh, Price gets a little bit cheaper then. Yeah, and then so are you? Like, where are you? Are you working all over the state, or because I see you all over the place on Facebook? Yeah, we we're in about 115 cities in Florida. Um, we're in 12 states all together. We also have some freshwater units that ship like to the Midwest and and uh, out west. Uh, we're in the Bahamas. Uh, we've had some calls lately from Puerto Rico, some different places that the people who are interested in in uh, putting these in to try to um, have more sea life. Everyone's got the same problem. It's not just Southwest Florida. Uh, the water is not as clear as it used to be. There's not as many fish as there used to be, not as many birds as there used to be. Um, yeah, so everyone's looking for solutions. So we, we've, been, we've been spreading quickly. And uh, this year has been kind of a race uh, trying to keep up with it and trying to get to everybody uh, as quickly as we can um, as, as we scale this you know, up kind of larger and larger. Right, right. And you mentioned freshwater. So, like, I mean, w what effect does it have in a freshwater? Like, you live on Lake Okeechobee or, I mean, or on a lake in, in general? Well, there, there are certain, like here in Florida, there are quite a few um, rivers uh, coming from, especially in the Panhandle, um, but also coming out of Lake Okeechobee and in the St. John's, um, there are actually freshwater uh, filter feeders that, that live in those, those systems. So, um, Again, they take a little while to, to grow up. They take them a good year to get the full size. But uh, the, the mini reef essentially can, can operate exactly the same in, in those bodies of water. 
uh, if you were in a lake in a lake or a river um, that, that doesn't have any kind of um, animal uh, filter feeders, uh, they'd be more of a, they'd be producing fish. Uh, they still work the same that way. They're going to get some type of growth, you know, some type of growth on the unit that, that will be, you know, helping the water column some as far as extracting some of the nutrients out of it. Um, but the, you know, the water filtration part won't be quite the same if, if you're somewhere without those fresh water uh, invertebrates that can live on it. I got you. Um, so what's your future goal for this with the mini reefs? And what, what's your, I don't know, where, where do you see well, this? Our, our, currently, our, our, um, what we're working on is, is actually you know, getting this distributed you know, around the country, around North America. Uh, we have you know, a lot of people, a lot of interested um, companies calling you know, that, that interact with people, whether, whether it's marinas or boat sales, um, you know, seawall companies, that kind of thing, interested in, in giving their clients an opportunity to find out about what we're doing you know, and putting these in. So our, you know, our kind of five, ten, ten year plan is, is to you know, have 100,000 units in the water and you know, be cleaning you know, 100 billion gallons of water a year. And, producing millions of fish and crabs every single year. Um, you know, just the state of Florida, you know, there's almost a million docks here. Uh, and, and under almost all of them, you know, it's just wasted space. We're not doing anything with it. And uh, it's an opportunity to, to bring back a little bit of nature that we lost during development, you know, and, and, and make a difference. So that's what we're working on. You know, put something in the water that, that um, you know, can make a positive effect and putting as many of those in as we can. Yeah, and so just so everyone out, out there knows, like how do you how do you install these? Uh, well, we, we, we come in. You have to get underneath your dock. Uh, we have to make sure there's no, there's nothing. You know, sometimes people don't know that cement was poured. You know, years ago, or there's a pile of cement blocks under there or something like that. Have to make sure there's no obstructions. And then we attach the mini reef to uh, the dock. It's the floating rings that go around your dock pilings, um, either two, three, or four pilings, depending on how the how the dock is built. And uh, you know, the, both the attachment points, the ring around your piling, and the unit itself. You know, they just float with the tides, float with the storms. Um, there's no water in your canal; they're just sitting on the bottom. Uh, you know, if there's a if there's a hurricane, they'll they'll go up underneath of the. Uh, the stringers of the dock and it'll sit there until the water level goes back down to normal. So then it's just uh, attached to the pilings and it just floats up and down with the water, the tide. Right. Okay. That's, that's basically the only maintenance with the unit is, is those attachment points. You know, over time, uh, you know, oysters and, and barnacles and things on the, on the, um, the pilings will, will require those attachment points to be uh, replaced probably after, you know, between five and 10 years, depending on, what kind of wave action is in the area. Um, but other than that, it just does this thing. You don't do anything to it. Mother nature, if animal dies, it, it falls off the unit eventually. And um, it's replaced by somebody brand new. Cool, man. David, I appreciate it, man. So where um, people are interested, they want to learn more, where should they go? Especially to order Our one. website is Ocean. Okay, yeah. Uh, it's oceanhabitatsinc.com is our website actually a brand new version of it getting ready to launch uh, here shortly. And um, a lot of information on there, our 800 number is on there for them to, to call in if, if uh, they don't have their questions answered. And um, you know, you're able to order right on there if, if you are wanting to donate for a unit. Uh, and uh, we get you scheduled to come out as quickly as possible. Cool, cool. And so um, they'll, we'll send them to the website, we'll put all that information in the um, uh, body of the post as well. Um, so David, I appreciate you being with us. Did I miss anything else that you like to cover that, that you know it's important that I didn't cover? Um, actually, you know, one thing, our, our freshwater unit is called the Fish Crib. Uh, for everybody who has a home up north, um, does a great job of growing uh, fish in, in freshwater lakes and, and ponds. So if you know, you're from the Midwest and there's just not as many fish as there used to be in your pond, um, your know, lake, uh, fish cribs can actually... Um, you know, be deployed there and, and they'll help uh, give small, you know, just like down, down here in Florida, they'll help give small uh, fish a chance to grow up, get bigger and survive and, and reproduce. So, you know, those can be shipped to any, anywhere in, in North America. Uh, so, you know, if, if you're doing something down here for the environment, you can also do something back up, you know, north where you're from if, if, you, uh, if you want to. The fish crib. 
Got it. Cool, man. Well, dude, I appreciate it. And, um, you know, thanks for coming on. It means a lot. And so if you guys, uh, you know, want to check them out, go to that website, get yourself a reef, mini reef for your dock. If you're up north, Midwest, get yourself a fish crib. Just to say you have a fish crib yep. sounds pretty cool, to be honest. <laughs> so uh, enjoy that. Uh, David, thanks again. And you guys out there, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe uh, to the podcast. we got some other stuff coming up. Um, Cat the Planet will be back on talking about water farming sometime in the future. So that'd be pretty cool. Um, and then, you know, always try to bring new topics to you guys. So appreciate everyone watching. David, thank you, sir. Appreciate you coming on. Appreciate you. Hey, thanks for having me out. I appreciate it. Oh, you got it. Hey, everyone, you have a good day. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.